Car chats are back. What's up, guys? All right, you guys are telling me you like these car chats, so I'm just gonna keep doing them. Um, this one uh, is on honor of the call that I'm gonna be doing tonight with my clients and hire. Um, on Mondays, we do mindset Zoom calls. And um, so if you're my client, you're getting a little spoiler alert. If you're not my client, you're getting the goods. Um, and I want to talk about three reasons that your relationship with yourself sucks. Okay. <laughs> and I'm saying that because so many people struggle with this, whether it's I'm getting feedback on my podcast or whether it's um, people talking to me in, at one-on-one with clients. Relationship with self is not doing so well. And I want to talk about why. So your relationship with yourself is just like any other relationship. And there's three keys, three big hitters in any relationship. So if you compare this to like your relationship with your loved one, like your um, romantic partner or your parents or siblings or kids or friends or whoever, it's very true. The first one is respect. So if you don't have respect for someone, how's your relationship with them? How much do you want to spend time with somebody you have no respect for? What are your thoughts? Where does your mind go when you think of someone that you lack respect for? It's pretty negative, right? And do you really want to be around them that much? No. So if you have no respect for yourself, you know how you're, that's going to be misery in and of itself because you're just not going to want to be with you because you don't respect you. And how do we build self-respect? We have to do things and show up for ourselves in ways that earn it. Really, we do. We have to show ourselves. We have to admire ourselves a little bit. We don't have to earn respect from anybody else. But ourselves, that's really important. So what are some ways that we can earn respect with ourselves? One is we can learn how to not make commitments that we're not gonna keep. So one thing that I do, another call that I do with my clients and hire is we do Friday accountability calls. And part of the reason we do that, we pick one thing each week we're gonna be held accountable for. And the reason we do that is not to sh public shame each other if we don't do it. It's part of it is for us to examine what kind of commitments do I keep making to myself? Are those realistic? I'm shredded, thank you. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, so, so for example, Sometimes in fitness, I'll get a client and they're like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds this month. I'm so motivated, Tara. You don't even know. Yeah, you're motivated until you're miserable as crap and hungry. <laughs> Motivation goes away real quick. So part of that respect is learning how to make um, uh, goals that are, yes, they're big, but they're also achievable, right? So just like with our kids, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't ask your kid to achieve something that's unattainable for them. And you kind of know that that would be cruel, right? So that would put that, set that kid up for disaster. So don't do that to yourself. Don't, you know, if you're 300 pounds, probably running a marathon is not a great fitness goal for you, right? Like let's start with something achievable. Like I'm going to eat vegetables at every meal for the next 30 days <laughs> or one meal, one meal, one meal a day, right? Something like that. Okay. Respect, right? And another part of respect is giving yourself freaking credit. This is like epidemic levels of can't give ourselves credit. It's like the expectations are so high. The pressure is so high that it's like, no matter how much you achieve, you're constantly like being like there, I should have done better though. There could have put it on better. And there's no credit given. So let's give ourselves credit. That's another part of having self-respect. Um, also setting up boundaries, right? Showing up for yourself when it's a no, it's a no, right? When you just want time to yourself, just cause, give that to yourself, right? Boundaries, huge part of self-respect. Um, hi, greetings. Is it okay to do neck exercises? Um, I, I would say, you know, maybe like in yoga doing like what they have in yoga where it's like stretching mobility, stuff like that. I don't particularly do neck exercises or really recommend them. Um, but I don't know, that would probably be more like physical therapist realm than mine. Um, so, okay. Next and the next thing, so we have respect. The next thing that we need is honesty. Okay, so in any successful relationship, we need to have honesty. Sometimes honesty can be scary. Sometimes honesty sucks, right? Because you don't want to say it. You don't want to admit it. And honesty with ourself, ourselves, that really sucks. Especially when it's something that is not so admirable in you. And you have to see that. And you have to be honest with yourself. And if you keep freaking lying to yourself, I, guys, it's so much. Like, when I get a client that is fine about everything and, like, knows everything there is to know about fitness and everything's great, 
yet they're like in tears or they're like, <laughs> you know, extremely overweight. I'm like, this is going to be tough because I see that you've built this like really huge pattern of lying to yourself that you're fine and everything's good and you're doing great and you got this all on lock and it's like, okay, at some point we got to give it up and we got to be honest with ourselves, especially about our shortcomings. And that doesn't have to be in a self brutal. It doesn't have to be brutal. It can be in a loving way. It can be almost in like a fun way. Like when somebody points something out to me that I'm like, Oh, oh, I do do that. But do you see where I go? I kind of like smile and I'm like, okay, okay. Mm, all right. <laughs> we can, we can work on that. You know, it's, just, it can be in a very positive self-loving way, but allow it in, you know? And if somebody you love is giving you feedback, that is a gift don't get defensive about it. They wouldn't be saying it for no reason, right? So especially if you're getting multiple sources of people saying the same thing to you, that's when you got to be really honest with yourself. And it's like, I'm hearing this from different outlets, <laughs> different people from totally different walks of life are giving me the same feedback about myself. Got it. Like that's got to be happening, right? And take that as a gift and be honest with yourself about that. Okay. The last one is, um, respect, honesty, and trust. Last one is trust. Do you trust yourself? And this is, in my opinion, the biggest hitter. Um, let's see. My husband is always pointing out my tone. <laughs> yeah, it's true though with my kids. Yeah. And you know what, with your tone, that's such a great example with your tone. So the tone's coming out because of the underlying emotion. So what is the underlying emotion? Is it frustration? Is it, um, overwhelm like and then why right so getting into the deeper root stories um, is there like an unrealistic expectation of how things are supposed to be and anytime it doesn't meet up to that you're just mad you know like um, the example I give is with my kids I have like pillows on my couch never freaking again I have pillows on my couch that can be tossed there's like a bunch of throw pillows right that's like the back of the couch my kids just like throw them on the ground all the time. And it was this biggest thing forever. I'm like, how many times have I asked you guys? It's back on the couch at the end of the night, let it go. And so sometimes that anger and frustration, the story for me was my kids are disrespecting me by not doing what I want them to do. And they're just being kids. They're not thinking about it. They're not disrespecting me. They just, they're not even thinking about it, you know? And so sometimes that frustration can come from unrealistic expectations. And that is, if we're doing that to other people, we're doing that to ourselves too, right? So if you get really frustrated with yourself, if you don't meet up to your expectations, you're going to do that to other people as well. So now we have to look like, Hey, what's the story here? Like, why is that so important? Why was the pillow thing so important to me in the first place? Right? It was like this measuring stick of like how well I raise my kids and how clean I keep my house and like all this BS. It was like messing up our relationship over something so silly. Right? So my ego was wrapped up into it. That It was like this power dynamic, like, and it didn't need to be there. So getting into the underlying reasons of why we're getting triggered. Triggers are gifts because they're letting us know that there's some sort of resistance in our life that doesn't need to be there. And it's all rooted in us and the stories that we're creating. Okay. The last thing that I'll say is, um, going back to trust. So trust. So, um, when we, when we see that we can trust ourselves, our relationship with ourselves goes astronomical. For example, like think of somebody in your life that you don't feel like you can trust. Like, first of all, you don't even want to like tell them anything. You don't really want to be around them. It's just like co completely repulsive. You don't feel safe. And so if with yourself, you don't have a good track record, like you keep telling yourself you're going to do all these things and you don't do them. You keep making all these like crazy goals and then you never follow through. Um, you like, yeah, you just don't have a good track record with yourself at all. Your relationship with yourself is going to suffer. So self-trust on a really simple level, like start with like one small thing that you know you can commit to and freaking show up for yourself. Show up, show up, do it. Do what you said you would do. Um, Ed Milet talks about this a lot. He says self-confidence comes when we do, when we see that we do what we said we would do, right? When we know that we can trust ourselves to follow through with what we said we're going to do, it's like that trust and that respect come automatically, right? So 
part of that is like making sure we're not putting astronomical pressure on ourselves to achieve all these crazy things that are just too big in the first place. Um, just like, you know, on the trust thing, just like with your kids, I am not going to go home just because I'm thinking about maybe taking my kids on a trip to Virginia. I'm not going to go home and be like, Hey guys, guess what? We're going to go on a trip to Virginia when there's no plans for that and nothing set in stone at all. I, every parent knows we wouldn't, I, you wouldn't do that. Right. Cause that would be messed up <laughs> getting their hopes all up. And so, but we do that to ourselves. We're like, I'm going to look like the rock by next year. I'm going to be like a fitness model physique next year. Yeah. I'm going to do that. And we like put this like crazy pressure on ourselves when we don't even have any track record at all. We have no idea. At, like if we're even going to be able to achieve like a fraction of that, yeah, we put this pressure on ourselves and then when we don't achieve it, we ruin our self-respect and we ruin our trust with ourselves because it's like, you're full of shit. You keep saying all these things and you don't do any of them, right? So be careful, just like you would with little kids. Be careful with what you commit to, with what you say you're going to do. Don't say you're going to do it if you're not going to do it. When I signed up for this bikini competition, I was very, I was like, girl, don't you dare. Don't you say you're going to do it if you're not going to do it. I was like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, I really thought that sucker through, but like I knew I had to, there was a moment where I wanted to peace out on it. I was like, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, no, <laughs> because that's for me. That is for me. I, I need to know with my own relationship with myself that I'm going to follow through with what I said I was going to do. And of course I'm not perfect at it. Nobody is, but the more I do it, the more I build that self-trust and that self-respect. Um, wow. I literally just said, I don't feel like I trust myself. Yeah. That's like the biggest thing, right? And we live in a world where you have so many, we have so many options <laughs> and it's, it's fun to have dreams, right? It's fun to have aspirations, but we also have to like it's, dream big, right? Like I definitely do, but it's also like, okay, that's Z let's bring it to B now, A to B, right? Instead of just like having this constant pressure of like, we're at A and here's Z and we're just like, gotta be there now. You know, that is how we're never going to build self respect that you've been trying forever to change that thing on your own? Or are you going to try something different this time? And then, um, um, on honesty, are you lying to yourself? Where, how, why? And then, um, are you, can you trust yourself and can you start doing some little actions that will help you trust yourself more? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great night. Bye.